welcome, welcome to another episode of Books for Us. Uh, if you can't tell, I'm a little sick, so I don't actually know how different it sounds to you, but it doesn't feel great, but I really want to talk about this book. Uh, this is the second of many in my Booker Prize series, um, meaning that I read the 1970 second ever winner of the prize. So I'm really excited to talk about The Elected Member by Bernice Rubens. So let's just jump right in. As always, I'm going to start with a brief synopsis. So here we go. Norman Zweck was the apple of his family's eye and the pride of his Jewish community in London. His fame started with a prodigious ability to pick up languages and followed him throughout law school and beyond. His mother, Sarah, and his father, Rabbi Zweck, put every hope they had into him, having less care reserved for his sisters, Bella and Esther. In the present, things have changed a bit. Sarah, Rabbi Zweck's wife, has passed away. Esther has been ostracized from the family, and Bella, well into her 40s, continues to dress like she is in grade school. Rabbi Zweck is getting on his age. His health is deteriorating, and he is constantly worried about his son, Norman, the prodigy. Norman has become a drug addict and is tormented by silverfish, which crawl everywhere and nobody else can see. His condition is only worsening, and Rabbi Zweck and Bella can only do so much to help him. Norman's fear of the silverfish gets severe enough that involuntarily committing him to a mental hospital is the only option left for the Zweck family. This book is the story of Norman's stay in the mental hospital, his addiction, his family, and how all these things infinitely overlap. That's just my little synopsis. This book won the 1970 Booker Prize, so it was published in 69. So it's over 50 years old, obviously, and I expected it to be really outdated. I expected the word outdated in relation to the book's treatment of mental health and drug abuse to be an understatement. And while there are things that would not apply to today's world, mainly the, you know, how Norman came to be institutionalized and what his treatment was like, the betrayal, the betrayal of mental health was surprisingly apt. I was, I was kind of blown away by this. I think Bernice Rubens did a better job than a lot of modern authors do in, in her treatment of addiction and mental health. So, uh, so I'm going to go into my ranking. As you know, my ranking system goes from see for yourself to recommend to highly recommend to holy shit, you need to read this book right now. And I'm inclined to go with my highest praise and say you need to read this book right now. Uh, first off, the writing. It, it reads like butter. I I had never heard of Bernice Rubens, but I will definitely be reading more of her work. Uh, the way she conveys pain is so visceral, so real, without being pretentious. I, I, I could kiss it. As I, as I mentioned, this book is about a person who is addicted to drugs and has heavy themes such as depression, addiction, and suicide. So if these are not things you can currently read about, totally get it. Don't read it. That said, the way Norman's addiction affects his family and vice versa is so beautifully portrayed. I don't know how I had never heard of this book before, but I'm telling you, it's a quick read and it deserves to be read. As always, you may try your hand at my copy. So um, I'm actually going to switch it up a little bit, though. If you want my copy of The Elected Member by Bernice Rubens, write Norman in the comment section and I'll randomly choose the winner literally out of a hat. Uh, trust me guys, you do want to read this. Now that I've raved a little bit, as always, I will read a quick excerpt. So here is the first little bit of The Elected Member by Bernice Rubens. Norman Zweck dared not open his eyes. He turned over on his stomach, raised his knee high, stiffening straight the other leg. He slipped his toe into the division of the two mattresses, savoring the chill of the other side, the inherited side. Once it had been his parents' bed, a vast seven-footer, mahogany joined at both ends for form's sake, but divided in the middle for all practical purposes. 
Together but divided they had lain for the forty-five years of their marriage. When his mother had died two years before, she had, on that very bed, but on the other side, bequeathed it to him. His father had gladly taken over his son's single bedroom while Norman lay chained to his inheritance. Occasionally, he had slipped over to his cold legacy during his fitful sleeps, but nightmares awaited him on that side and terrible wakenings. He edged over for safety to his father's side, stiffening again his one leg and embedding his other foot into the dividing line, and without touching his body, he felt the feel of it. A young boy, he thought, would have felt the same sensation in the youthful stretch of the leg and the relaxed hollow between the shoulder blades, so he did not touch the folds on his stomach or the vain stretches of his groin. These were intellectualized realities and had nothing to do with the teenage layout of his body. He slipped his hand underneath the pillow, grazing his stubbled cheek. He smiled sadly at this undeniable touch of age, and to confirm it, grasped with his calloused hands the wrinkled folds of his flesh. He gathered them up, one by one, the muscleless wads on his belly, his chin and his thighs, twisting and turning them, obsessed by their feel of years. He returned to his original layout, but now he knew it for a fraud. The folds and wrinkles on his skin were notches each one for each of his forty-one years. He screwed his eyes tightly against the dark. He knew that his short sleep was over, but he was too terrified to acknowledge it. He should never have let himself doze off. God knows what they were doing while he was sleeping, and God knows what they were doing now, and where else they were, and how many. No, he would not open his eyes. If they were still there, he could rely on them to stay. He pulled the pillow over his ears. He didn't want to hear them either, yet he wanted to check that they were still there. He dreaded their presence, but their sudden absence would have terrified him more. They were the only witnesses to his sanity. He opened his eyes, first to the darkness under the pillow, and then to the darkness in the room, and it frightened him. He got up and groped for the light, and squinting, quickly returned to his blanket cocoon. Slowly he adjusted his eyes to the light, and he lay there, staring at his legacy on the other side. He felt the stinging behind his eyes, as a prelude to tears, and it surprised him. He had plenty to cry about but he had never given in to any feeling of self-pity. Quite often, he had thought to put an end to it all, but he had to convince somebody, at least one person, before he went, otherwise in their eyes he would die a madman. But nobody would listen to him anymore. Nobody believed him. Nobody had the willingness or the patience to sit with him for a while, if necessary, for hours, and see them like he saw them, and catch a little of his fear. So, all right, guys, yeah, thanks. That was a little excerpt from uh, The Elected Member by Bernice Rubens. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. As always, uh, I enjoyed reading. I enjoyed reading this book so much, and I hope you give it a shot. Um, again, if you write the word Norman in the comment section, you'll be entered automatically. Well, I don't know how it works, but you'll be entered to win uh, my, my copy um, and I'll just reply to your comment if I choose you out of the hat. I'm, I'm not really sure on time frames yet. I'm kind of still figuring this out, but I promise I'll make it as fair as possible. Um, either way, uh, if you don't win or you're not interested in getting my copy, whatever, find a way to read this book because I cannot wait to talk to you about it. Uh, again, thanks for listening. Don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, sorry for the sick voice, and uh, <laughs> thanks, guys. Uh, thank you. Seriously. I love you.